All right, are we good? Are we good? Okay, so today on our sew along for all of those that come back in here on my live feed, we're going to be making an apron. We're going to make a very basic apron that's going to fit, you know, it's just the bottom half. It's not a double, a top. There's no bib to it. Um, we're going to do it in these amazing contrasting fabrics. Um, this is that fat quarter you read in the description. And then this is for my waistband and pocket. And this is going to be the backing. This is the beginners. This is meant for a beginner's class. Um, this is all about you know how to sew a straight line. And you can sew. And that's it. This is your class. So don't be intimidated by this. When you see the finished product, you're just going to be amazed. You'll learn a couple little tips and tricks along the way. And I'll give you my experience. For those that don't know, I've been sewing for 37, no, 27 years. Not 37, 27 years. I've been sewing since I was 13. And, well, before that, I just got my first machine at 13. And um, this is straight lines. There's no patterns. And even if you make your your um, project a little bit different sizes, you're going to do what works for you. I'm mostly doing the way I'm doing it because of being convenient, being kind of lazy. I am a lazy sewer. But the really nice part is when you're done with this, there's going to be all finished edges. There's Everything's going to have a finished edge, which will make your sewing look high quality, really top notch quality um you can give this as a gift or just wear it for yourself you could even get into the desire of sewing for craft shows and this is going to be a phenomenal apron to do that with um, we're not going to worry about hemming because we're actually going to eliminate that process altogether by the way that we're making it and there won't be a back side we're going to put a pocket on it was kind of a last minute decision but we're going to go ahead and make a pocket and we're going to make extra long waistband and we're going to do I'm doing a thick waistband because cuter um I'm, I'm chunky around the waist, so I enjoy a wide waistband because it gives a more polished look. <laughs> it makes me feel skinnier in my apron. So that's what we're doing today. And you're going to hear about everything that's going on with me because that's how it is. So if you've never been in one of my um, chats before or my live shows, it's pretty much sitting around with me and I talk about everything. But I'm child safe and child friendly, so you don't have to worry about any of that nonsense. Usually my daughter's with me, but she's not with me today because she's off doing her Christmas stuff with her Mimi. Anyways, it'd be nice if she like would monitor my things and come back on. But Zap TV has made it. Yay. Joelle made it. I'm sorry about Tuesday. So I do a live show Tuesday. And unfortunately, I forgot that I booked an appointment on Tuesday at 2 o'clock. I was just like, seriously, what was I missing here? How was I not thinking? So I told y'all last week I was going to do um, this fabric in this one. I've decided to do this one also in there. I'm going to tell you why in just a minute. Hey, Green Gables. Um, but to do this project, hey, Creative Minds, you're definitely going to want your iron. You know, got my iron here. I did get ahead of the game and I ironed my stuff out. I'm having a live show. I have my, You want to come say hi? No. Are you sure? No. You want to maybe maybe just wave your hand? You want to go back and play? Yes, All right, go back and play. Give me give me that though. Give me that. Thank you. Go back and play. So that also means that I have everybody here. Lori, I know I got your message and I hadn't had a chance to get back. It has been going nonstop this morning. Um. All right, so to do this project, let me go back to that before she totally interrupted me, is um, I'm making some transformer fudge brownies while you sew. Girl. Um, you will need scissors or a rotor cutter. If you're doing the rotary cut, which I love the best, you're definitely going to want to have one of, um, what is this thing called? A ruler? A ruler. I'll put a link in. You can get this as a kit. They sell them on Amazon, which is really nice. And then I'm using my phone board. I like doing this because I'm a little bit lazy. And then you're going to want your sewing machine. 
Now, if you've noticed since doing this, I've yet to change my thread out. It's still red. So I'm making sure I'm doing projects that the red goes with it at all times. Homeschool Beauty says, hi, Trish. I am just getting my sewing machine set up. I would love a tutorial on how to make a baby doll pillow and blanket and diaper bag. Cool. Um, I might not get to that next, but um, I can get to that eventually. So you're wanting a baby doll pillow. Now we've done the baby doll pillow. We've done a pillowcase and I just did a pocket pillow. So you could kind of change your dimensions up with that. And most of the stuff I'm going to do every time with you guys is no pattern. Just learning to get on your machine and sew because that's just a huge one. So a baby doll size pillow. A blanket diaper bag I'm writing it down um, is no so style um, or no pattern style sewing just because sometimes the other patterns can sometimes be a different beast and just going in and using a straight out fabric just making some basic geometric cuts you know just rectangles and such you get to do a lot you know what I really want to do with you guys next week is the microwave bowl have you seen those where the, it kind of comes up like a um pedal and you set the bowl in and then you can pull it in and out and you don't burn yourself um kind of deal that's what i really want to do because i just seen the pattern for that um the other day the only thing i need to make sure is there's a couple specialty items i mean i know i could fudge it and do it with felt but I'm not sure if I want to do that. I think I want to do something a little bit heavier. But all else, I can do it in felt. And, I mean, felt's good stuff. It holds up. You know, it has, it's not batting. It's not, and you'll get people that will get really caught up and they want you to use, like, what things were designed for. And remember, I mean, the world has been sewing with sewing machines for over 100 years. We didn't, they didn't have that batting. In some cases, it was just, layers and layers and layers of fabric that they had or leftover fabric or old sheets or something like that so i'm a firm believer on using things that you have on hand especially if you're starting out because if you're starting out you don't want to be caught up chasing expensive pieces and such you want to be able to just kind of get your hands on and get dirty or you know get busy or whatever so I have to tell you what happened this week. I have lost my cool more than once this week. Yes, I'm drinking a diet soda. I was so broken from the addiction, but it was only a temporary break because now I'm back. Anyways, um, I have been like quarantined my sewing room off to the kids because I had all these projects. I had my fabric out because I've yet to do pillowcases and I need to get some pillowcases done because we have some gifts we want to give out and I you know they're riding on me I said you know what go ahead and sew I will let you sew I'm not worried about my daughter but it was my son it was my son and bless his heart he was in here sewing y'all hmm let me let me show you. Does any of this look familiar? What he was sewing on? I'm not quite. You know, he's making something for something. But does this not look very familiar to my Black Friday haul of Christmas fabric? Oh, I was so frustrated. I mean, angry because I was just like, son, I have all of this like cheap free fabric, and I'm like, this is good fabric, and I only bought enough to do my pillowcases. This beautiful, beautiful fabric. Right there. I don't even know what he did with it all. I don't, I don't know. It was like half a yard gone. And girl, I mean, he had, he has gone to town making stuff. I don't know quite what he was making. But you know, I saw this and was just like, I mean, because remember last week, I just kind of threw it over there while I was making. 
he just grabbed it and started playing it. And I was just like, and I got onto him. I'm like, you can't ju just use some, just use some consideration. Like don't just grab fabric. And I mean, I'm working really hard to be, to be, to be calm. I will say that I'm working really hard to be calm. Mish. All right, let me grab my cord and um, plug my phone in. Because if I don't do that, it will be a hot mess. And I feel like I'm just like cannot stop adjusting myself. All right, let me get this here. Plug in here. Yeah, and you know, the hard part is that's not the only fabric he cut up. He, no, it's not the only fabric he cut up. He cut up several, several pieces. And he, and bless his heart, he, he was in tears. He was, he felt really bad when he like, when I brought it to his knowledge, like the extent of what he did. Especially when I have a tub of fabric, like two feet over that he could have like, ugh. anyway. But it motivated that this would be in my apron because I'm not going to be able to do that stuff. I met several men who could sew very, very well when I worked in the Air Force. That may be his hidden talent. I think it is. He enjoys sewing. He enjoys, you know, and it's a lot of just like, it's neat being able to put stuff together. Oh, bandana grandma's going to be back. I know I'm not doing a really good job talking to you. I'm sorry. I'm in my own world. Um. And it might be, but I'm just like, use the other stuff. And the other part I have, and I kind of get on to him and my daughter, you know, it's great to experiment with sewing and just putting pieces together and all that. But at one point, you know, for me, I'm just, okay, so here's my thoughts on it. Learn how to do something well from the instructions given. And when you learn how to do that well, you understand the skills it takes to make your own stuff you know just to make your own stuff but first learn the proper way to do it so that's kind of what i'm doing with you guys is doing it that much but that's my rant on my blessed little son and then i found more pieces he had cut that he didn't make um he didn't he didn't come clean on until like last minute but it's okay you know and the good part about it is and this is where i'm going to give it because i now i didn't give it to him straight i'm going to give you all the straight load he might come back and watch this on me and then he'll be like mom i had to explain you cut up 12 dollars a yard fabric when i have free fabric that i had plans for 12 dollars okay so that's kind of how i gave it to him but I mean, like if you watch my Joanne's haul, you know, I bought it for 70% off. So it was like $4, I think somewhere in there. <sighs> it's not that bad, but still it's the, or five bucks, five bucks. Maybe, you know, he cut up, he cut up like four or $5 in fabric. I mean, with the whole scheme of things, four or $5 in fabric, maybe 10 at the most. The big picture is I can't replace it at that price. And I might take me like, um, no, I haven't started sewing. I'm just talking about my son cutting up all my Christmas fabric. But mine is like for me and having all my kids, I might get fabric, but it might be three months before I make the project. And I can't wait to get the fabric till I make the project because there'll still be another three months before I get there. All right. So that's my, that's my statement. That's, that's, that's my vent. There's my soapbox. Let's spin it a positive way. Isn't it awesome how creative my son is? Oh my goodness. And he's trying and he's not scared to try. Isn't that fantastic? I really, I'm really thrilled that he wants to experiment. I think he was trying to make a shirt. So I hope to um, get him reined in and, and getting him in the fabric bucket that he's allowed to get into but it did spur on the fact that i had to clean and i did clean in fact let me show you so there used to be stuff piled up here i took care of that and then look i have shelves and so let me see if i get this pointed right so there's my goodwill sewing machines that i got and the blue totes are for h items for i've been randomly collecting 
randomly collecting stuff. So let's go ahead and get started now that I've just jabber jawed for 15 minutes. Um, it's awesome that he wants to sew, maybe make a basket of free fabrics. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to do that because, mm. encouraging mom says, I stopped letting my children cut fabric with telling me how they are going to cut it. My big thing is you cut my good fabric without a plan. You just started cutting. On the other side of this, if my mother's watching, she's like, ha ha ha, it came back to you because I did that to her a lot. So anyway, okay, so we talked about this um, last week when we kind of came up the plan. Um, I am using a fat quarter. I got this fat quarter from Walmart. This is, you know, so you'll see it. And this is kind of the base of my apron. We're doing a flat front because we're not going to do anything crazy or anything like that. And we made the table runner a while back. So we're going to line this apron. Now, if you look at me, I'm about a size 12. So it goes to about here, but I really want that apron to go a little farther because I just think it looks cuter. So I, we're going to start off with, we're going to cut fabric later, but we're going to start off with the green. Now I cut the green to be the same width, the same length. See that? It's the same length. So remember we did this um, last time with the table runner. Look, I'm trying to tuck it in. Girls, I made it to Weight Watchers today. I lost five pounds doing the new freestyle plus. Isn't that cool? All right, so it's really simple. And I'm not cutting the salvage off on any good sewer wood, but we, we don't do it that way. The only big thing, so I'm gonna take my I'm gonna take my edge to my edge. The big thing is making sure your fabric is going in the same pattern. So this fabric does have some vertical and I love it just like all the words you know it kind of is vertical there's a little bit of it upside down but it's not really bad but so it, it runs horizontal here and then when you look at the green fabric I'm going to use it runs horizontal like this to so see the Merry Christmas so I want to make sure that my they're going in the same they're going I don't want to sew it this way. I don't want to turn my fabric around and then it's going to look weird that I have Merry Christmas going up and down this way, but all the other stuff going this way. I want it all to be uniform. Okay. So the first thing I'm doing, and I put in the show notes that this is a yard, this is half a yard. This is over half a yard because um, these pieces here are 18 by 24. No, they're eight. This one's 18 by 22. This is a fat quarter, 18 by 22. There are less of you, but you're just wonderful. Thanks. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get my kombucha out of the pot before I ever cook it again. I'll tell you that. Um, and then this is 18 inches too. So this is over half a yard, but not a yard. Get a little extra because this one, when I actually cut it up, had this, it was off this much when they cut it. All right. If you're so inclined, you can cut the salvage off. What, baby? Oh, you found your peg people. Good job. Get it? Yeah. Like, there's, there's the face. All right. So I'm just going to take my two pieces, um, fronts together. And now look, I have like a little bit off. See that? I'm just, you got to line it up one side. Don't, don't eyeball this because otherwise it won't be done right. And you'll be like, why did this not work right? So I'm lining this corner up. And then you're going to pin it. Unless you're really good and you don't need to pin it. I'm kind of that good, but eh, I'm not enough coffee today. I might not be that good. The only thing I'm going to do see the salvage i'm going to make sure that my inseam that this when i stitch my stitch is going to be past the salvage so that's one good thing about cutting it because i don't want to see that white on my project if that makes sense okay okay i gotta move stuff i did do good i ironed i had about 10 minutes before the show started and i got some ironing done oh this is 
Like that's how much overhang was on there. That's why I said get a half inch. That's that's seriously quite a bit. That's a full inch. Because it wasn't squared. It wasn't squared. All right. So I'm just you do any and see me like I mean a bigger the better a little bit bigger the better kind of but not all the way um kind of deals let's see all right I'm gonna do that one back stitch don't forget the back stitch just because it helps everything come together where's my pack so are y'all like getting in the Christmas thing because I'm gonna tell you I've done more sewing this December I forgot my socks the Christmas socks next week I'll show you next week um are you ready for Christmas? Kind of, sort of. I made it. Oh, um, sorry you missed. Sorry, missed you on time. Our shop out shopping for warm winters. Thank you for my Bible. I got my Bible last night, Crystal. So Crystal sent me a really cool, and I left it at the house because I read it this morning. Version, which is my favorite one to read, and it's the Homeschool Mom Bible. And so, and like, it's really cool because when you go through it, it has every day of the year in there and you get like a little one. And it was funny because the one for today had to do with not trying to cram everything in. And, you know, it kind of was a little pull on um, mom guilt for trying to squish everything in in one time. Or, you know, like this mom had made half days by getting rid of recess. And she kind of realized she was doing it for her own benefit than her children's benefit and everything was coming apart. And then the, the problem we sometimes do as moms is making, trying to do too much at one time. And it's like God, just total God wink on this one because I kind of came, I was ready to put my kids in school. I mean, like I was having one of them days where I was just like, I can't do it all. And I really, by the end of the day and God working through me and through prayer, it was just like make things simpler, simple, 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 simplify everything you can. Nothing of great, you know, work, just simple. And there you'll find peace. And I'm kind of like, and then I read that this morning. I was like, oh, yeah, it was great. I love it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I got a little something in the mail for you. Just a little something. But I hopefully you'll like it. All right. So let me show this. All right, let me. I am not even so that straight. Doing an end seam that deep is like not easy to do very straight for me. I'm just gonna say all right so I did the one side now even though they're not even I'm going to match up this side just like we did with the table runner when it wasn't even and now remember it's this end that I matched up to the top not this end otherwise that would be funky all right okay and then I'm just gonna pin it so one of the things we're going to have to do is find the middle again because we're going to want the middle. And I'll show you how to do that really simple to find the middle. And I'm not going to do such a big inseam here because I don't need it. Because it's not white. All right. All right. Okay, so this should look familiar from last week. I got your package, Crystal, and I got something coming for you. So be on the lookout. So see, it's, you know, kind of like last week what we did with the table runner. But now in order, I want to find my centers. So I'm going to piece that part here, and I'm going to find my center. So I'm going to find my center because this is giving me a little border. And now I'm going to pull, watch, I'm going to, because this might be hard for some of y'all. All right, so there's a pin to that piece. Here's another little trick. 
here's a pin in the middle of this piece. Let me get in here. There's a pin there, right? Make sure I didn't pin it through the other end. All righty. Let's see, did I get it? Oh, that's not straight. Okay, so see I have these two pins. Now what I want to do, well, first off that I want to do is I want to iron my flap straight. I want to op open these up. So I'm going to iron this and I'm going to bring it along. Look at that rolls. This is not a very becoming shirt. Usually I hide it by wearing an undershirt tank top, but there's going to be less of me. All right, so let me take you to the iron. Okay. So how I'm doing this is, see, I just line this piece like that. Move my pen out of the way. And I'm going to open up my seam. See that? I'm just opening up my seam, and I'm going to take the iron to it. Why you want to do this is it's going to um, help your, your pieces lay really nice and flat. There's one. And then do the other. Okay, so there's one. And then same thing here. We're just going to open this flat. All right, so this becomes important. We're going to have to iron it again. Because what we want to do, oh, I took out the piece. I took out the pin. Dog nabbit. You see that? I'm like, why do I have this piece here? All right, so what I'm doing is I'm taking my two pieces that formerly had the pin. And now I'm going to put them together like this. See, I just pinned that together. And I did that so that I can get this centered. Maybe some kind, kind of centered. I'm not doing a good job on this. So see, I'm centering this piece up. Do you see that? I know the light's in the way. Hold on. Okay. There we go. So now that this is centered, I'm going to pin it. And I'm pinning it on the bottom here. I'm going to pin this bottom. And this is where it's straight at the edge. There's not an overhang here. Grab a couple of pins. Let me see. Grab two more. Okay. Now what I want to do is this folded edge right here. I want to iron this nice and flat. Can't grab the camera. That's not my iron. All right. So I'm just going to do this nice and flat just to give it a nice flat piece. Okay, just like that. All righty, let's get you back to where you belong. Do that. Okay, so we ironed, you know, we just ironed it. And remember, so then it gives you that, you know, going back to the table runner we did last week. No, when did we do the table runner? What did we do last week? I know. I I don't remember what we did last week. Is that not sad? What did we do? I know I did the, um, at the end, I did the mug one. Let's see. Let's see. I wanted to send you something. You'll see. All right. Um, the beat. Yes, I'm on. I'm so glad you made it here. All right, what did I make last week? Is that not sad? I don't know what I made last week. Let me see. Oh, I made the pillow. I made the pillow. So it was the week before. Case. This is not a pillowcase. This is an apron we're making. Okay. 
So what I did, just like we did with the table runner, I took my short piece, I sewed it to the end of my two long pieces, and then I found my center of both and brought them together. And now I ironed it. So I have this, these two. I'm going to sew here in doubles, back stitch here, back stitch, back stitch, back stitch. And then we're going to turn it inside out. But before that, we're going to iron it. So here we go. Hold on. Hold on here. Yeah, last week was the pillow. We're doing the apron. And the week before that was the table runner. But you're going to love this apron. It's all in my head. It's in my head how it's going to turn out. But I know it's going to turn out good. Okay. Backstitch these corners because it needs to hold up. Hey, and if you're here, give me a thumbs up if you haven't done so already. Okay, we're going to open this um, this inseam up, but in order to do that with it being a fold, we're going to trim this, and we're actually going to trim it a little different. I am going to trim the corner off, so let me do that. I'm going to trim it at an angle versus just cutting it off. See that? I just cut it at an angle, and that's just so it doesn't bulk up when we turn it inside out. So here, same thing. Look at the fabric, not the camera. See, there it is. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to iron this open. Hey, Texas gal, how are you? So I'm going to, I'm going to iron this open like that. And this is just so it sits right. If you ever have a problem where you're sewing and then you fold it inside out and you feel like you can't get a good like flat, it has everything to do with you not having a thick enough. It's not about having a short inseam. It's about a bigger inseam. So I'm going to take this and iron this out. I'll take you with me so you can see the ironing. To see legit, I'm ironing. Can you see that? You can't see that. Let me pull my curtain down a little bit more. There. All right, so see, I'm going to open this up. Who's calling me? I don't know who's calling me. I can't answer that. I'm in a live show. All right, so I'm just opening this up. Nothing fancy. I just want it to... be open and now I'm going to flip it over oh, can you answer that stop calling me all right now I'm going to flip it over I'm going to fold this piece over too just so I'm opening up that seam so I got that seam open I know you're looking at my hand. All right, so see, I have the seam open. You see that? I know. I got some crazy hair today. You just got to just, you know. Um, Taking an item and laid it out and cut it out to cut a pattern. I have. I have. I got a good one. I started. Um, but then I have to follow directions. And, you know, my ADHD kind of just gets a little bit wiry. So, see, it looks like this. You know, it almost looks like a big pillow, but it's not. It's a feature apron. <gasps> oh, wait. I did this wrong. Dog nab it. Tell me it's going to be okay. Tell me. Tell me. Because it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Because that's the bottom. Do y'all notice what I did? That's the bottom. Everything's upside down. I cannot believe I did that. I can't believe I got straight out. So let's sit back and talk like any good. Let me iron this flat, kind of. This is your friend that you hate going out with. Mm. All right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. A little lesson in seam ripping. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find a little spot in here, and then I'm going to open it up. 
way easier than like find it on the outside like the stitch I'm gonna find a stitch on the outside can you see that I'm gonna find a stitch right there I'm gonna open it and then I'll be able to just drag it open I can't believe I did that what a newbie mistake see it doesn't matter how long you've been sewing it just happens so I'm just see I cut it like immediately my finger went in and then let me open this up now I got that open I'm just kind of can you see that hmm now I got that double stitch in there while I went back and forth so that's kind of more of a pain in the butt to cut but it's fine oh I can't believe I did that Oh, it's getting hot in here. All right, so see, I got that little piece done. You take a lot of years of seam ripping to know how to seam rip fast. I'm just saying, it's, it's just how it goes. I hate the seam ripper. They're not for left. They're not for left-handers. Wait, why are they not for left-handers? I think you got to be careful about the ones you get, and then they get better. I think so. I'll have to pay attention to that because you know I got a lefty. My dad was left too. He was a lefty, and then my daughter's a lefty. All right, you can't see. Let me let me set you up so you can kind of see what's going on. All right. So see, I'm just you see that. Not too hard because you don't want to cut your fabric. You can rip your fabric open super easy. And you're gonna see why I don't want this to happen. Because this is the part that's going to go up in the waistband. Because we're making a waistband. And we're going to make a pocket, too. We're totally making a pocket. This would have been a good time to talk about my son cutting up my fabric. But it happens. I know. I torture the poor little girls in my sewing club. When they have to pull the seam ripper out, I'm like, welcome. We've all had anybody who sews has had their time with a seam ripper. So, but I mean, like, look, see, I got almost all of it done. See, not too, too terribly bad. Um, like you're having to fight with it, then your seam ripper, because this part here has gotten, see it? This is a newer one. But this little part here is your blade. So if you're fighting with it, then it's gotten dull. I have a small cutting guide that is on the wrong side. I have a small cutting Oh Yeah, you don't want that. You want it sharp on both sides. All right. Such a newbie. I so, But you're going to love this apron. Love it. And be careful if you do like this because you could accidentally, if you're pushing too hard with a dull one, you can poke yourself. I've done that. And sometimes you can pull it apart and then cut, pull it apart, cut, pull it apart and cut. Okay. Man, I can't believe I did that. Drive me a little squirrely. All right. All right, now that we're done, and see, I got that corner. It won't even matter. That's not going to be a big deal at all. All right, I'm going to iron the top out flat again. So just kind of show you what I got going on. Oh, it's feeling toasty in here. You know what's nice about Florida? You can freeze at night and then be in the 80s during the day, which drives me nuts. Yeah, you like my big way. I'm so gentle. Bandana grandma in the house. She's come back. You also, yeah. Okay, so I said that. So I'm going to come back here and I'm just going to iron that back up to the flat part. Just iron that top flat. I'm going to come here and thankfully I have my fold line still kind of going. My fold line. Just gonna. I'm just re-ironing this out straight again since I wrinkled it all up. Let me do the same here, so I don't have to find my center. 
I'm going to iron this all flat. It's a little bit off, but it's okay. So see, it's a little bit off. Can you see that? All right, so I'm going to pin it. I got those clips, and I forget to use I don't even know where they're at. I don't know where they're at. Once. Yep. Okay. There you go. What does it say? Trish, did you ever take stretch and sew? I have been told they no longer teach it. Let's see. I don't know what that is. Trish, I was worried about you when I didn't see you Tuesday. Everything okay? I, in my delusion of stuff, scheduled a kid's doctor's appointment Tuesday at 2 o'clock. Who does that? And I did it. I totally did it. And then I was like, oh, man. So I put on there on Instagram real quick. Um, yeah. Brain loss there. Pocket pillowcase. That was last week. Last week was a pocket pillowcase. All right. So I'm going to stitch this like I did just a minute ago. All right. I gotta find my right inseam because I should trim this, but I'm not because I don't do that. But okay, so if you have a situation like mine where it's like not even here, it would be better to like I should do this now because I'm here. I should do this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna trim it. You know, I could do something funky too. I could trim it. I could trim it at an angle, and then it would be a point at the bottom. That would be kind of cool. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna trim this up like this and I'll show you what I'm doing okay so see I'm just gonna take this and I'm just gonna trim like this can you oh why can I show it I'm just gonna trim it across like that I feel bad I hope I don't make y'all sick anytime when I'm moving that camera you're younger than me. Do you remember the stretch and sew program by Singer? Oh, what it? But what is the program? What is? I want to know about this program. Let's bring it back. Maybe Singer would let me be their um their person that brings it back, right? Wouldn't that be cool? I could totally handle like a sponsorship from Singer, even with a brother's machine. I like Singer. Okay, okay, okay. Back to the plan, folks. I got to get back on this. I'm, I'm slowly ADHing out. All right, all right, all right, all right. Cut, 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 cut. Oh, it didn't cut all the way through. Really? Okay. So, I mean, see, I cut that like bit off. So now it's straight the way it should be. See? Now it looks just perfect. Let me stick a few pins in so I don't lose my stuff. Good gravy. Listen, I was up in the, I was up, I was shopping. Come on, Trish, find it interesting. Hold on, I'll, I'll Google. Yeah, find it. Find me out. Okay, so, um, I was at Bell's Outlet, so it's like the Florida version of like Ross or whatever. It's, it's, it's my jam. Anyways, looking for tomorrow is the big Christmas party. Heading out, um, heading out to um, the Christmas party, and so I was, you know, you know, I like to look like I'm on it. I, okay, for those that don't know, so my husband's Christmas party is the Christmas party from the same company I worked at. Him and I worked at the same company. We didn't meet there. We got hired together, though. We were already married. <laughs> Bacon and eggs, watching you. So, no, it's not weird. I find it normal or doing dishes or something like that. Um, so we have, so anyways, we both work there and I work there, you know, it's kind of a big deal when I worked, whatever anymore, you know, I'm barefoot. I've been barefoot pregnant the whole time since I left and you know, I homeschool kids. I'm pretty unglamorous, but when I go, I have to be like point on. So I was up in the, up in Bell's outlet and the youngest one by like 30 years. That was again my Weight Watcher meeting. 
but I grew up in that kind of thing. It, it, I love it. it. It's it's good. All right, hold on. Don't lose focus. So um, I'm in there in Bell's Outlet, and I was in rare form. I was like stand up comedian form. I'm like cracking jokes because I found some shoes. I don't know about you, but I can't wear a heel. I wear flats. You like it? It's like two sentences, and then I stop talking, and I sew. Pulling you on the edge about these flats. But if I don't look at the camera and talk, you can't hear me. Stretch and Sew was especially useful for knits. They had a book, and you actually stretch and sew machines. Um, I know that a lot of, there's a lot of knits coming back. Trish, you always look beautiful when you and your hubby go out. Thanks. I totally glam it up. I glam it up. So I try to go as trophy wife status. So my first deal is the only shoes that wear that are not stinking tennis shoes or boots, like, you know, like, um, oh good. Send that to me. Um, that are not like mud rucking mud kickers you know because like i wear these big huge honker mud kickers all the time because i'm lazy or flip-flops those are like my three shoes of choice are these boots but i can't wear boots every time and i kind of want to wear a dress i really want to wear a dress and and then i went to kohl's i went to jc Penney's. i ended up at bell's outlet so i found a dress i'll show you the dress i'm making a really weird face it's not very becoming it's not you know you know me. I'm just all like, Bleh. I'm sending it to my bestie. I'm like, how's my dress look? You know, those that that's what I do. That's what I do when for my bestie. My bestie has to preview my outfits with me making like faces because that's that's what I do. Um, so I found a dress, not a complete weird face actually. This is a pretty good one. This is the one I went with. I'll show you my other one. I didn't like it. I'm going to tell you, I didn't take a picture. I, no, I think I did take a picture of the other one. I thought I did. Anyways, I took this one. I thought this one was going to be like Mac Daddy because last year I went with the black jumpsuit. So why not get a maroon one, right? Look at it. Look at it for a second because it took me a moment to realize it looks like Star Trek from the next generation. Come on, tell me it doesn't. It, it kind of has that feel. It wasn't really becoming around the waist either. It was a little bit like, mm -hmm. um, Zap, what did she say? I have to get off the apartment because they're painting the doors and I have a strong headache. Oh, I'll see you later. Come back, Zap. We'll see you then. Um, oh, you're going to send it to me. So I wore, and in fact, I tried, um, can you see this one? I tried this one. It was like a black lace and it was off the shoulder. I don't really do that well. It didn't look good. And I was like, it was like really cheap too. It was like $19 or $15. Like I should get this anyways. I'm like, no, I shouldn't get it. All right. So I went with this one. This one, I feel like very like the little black dress. You see it? I know it's not good. Do you see those shoes? This is what got me going. Do you see those shoes? See them? See them? I mean, aren't they not like gorgeous? They're flats. They're gorgeous and they're flats. And here's my thing. My perfect outfit for a Christmas party, for the Christmas party, um, was, is, I just want to look like Audrey Hepburn from Breakfast with Tiffany. The beautiful black dress with the flats. She wore flats. It didn't look like granny flats. Those flats are amazing. But they're not really my size. They are a size smaller than they should be i'm a nine and a half they're eight and a half and you know what i don't care i don't care um and i went through the whole like bag and it's like the only or the whole aisle it's the only shoe they have of this that one size and it kind of fits it's not like horribly bad but it kind of fits so i'm like having myself a full meltdown in the shoe section comparing all the flats because i wear flats but they don't make gorgeous pretty flats they make oh i keep all the books straight at the library flats I'm here. I'm casual. They don't make dress up flats. And I don't want a bow. 
I'm, I'm not four. So hold on a second. I'm missing some stuff. Okay. 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 Put a Star Trek emblem on the shoulder and sell it online for four times what you paid. <gasps> Cosplay. There it's at. I'll have to put a little black trim in it. But yeah, you know what? You are like on the money there. I got to go back and buy that. Um, Joelle says, had a bad hair, Katie, because of the wildfires here in California. She's in the lawnmower and the leaf blower. Oh, bless your heart. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, I did buy the little black dress. I did buy the little black dress. Um, but the shoes. Oh, the shoes. When I had my daughter, I went up an entire shoe size. Yeah, me too. Which store had the flats? Bell's Outlet. So I'm gonna, I'll, I'll take a picture of the flats later, and so you can text because the, the, the feel of them are amazing. But I didn't want to buckle, you know, because here's the sexy dress. You know, it is the black dress, a black dress, and it's lined, so you know, it's like a little bit high dollar. It was not the twenty five dollars I paid for it. That's not how it's supposed to be. I think I need to grow my middle toe two inches longer to wear some of those pointy shows. Your toes aren't supposed to go in the point, bandana. Um, so anyways, I'm in there having a meltdown because there's either a buckle. They look just ridiculous. You cannot wear them with these shoes. I didn't want a black velvet. I just like this. It just was a shoe without a heel and they're gorgeous. I'm going to buy every color when I can find them. So I had that. And then, you know, it's a cute dress, but up close, you're going to see the mommy rolls, you know, like this, like the mommy rolls. There's the mommy rolls. So you're going to see the mommy rolls. So I hit, you know, that section of the store. And then I just went into, I was like, I had just enough of an audience that I just was out loud being inappropriately hilarious. And then I was onto the jewelry. And I mean, I just had the whole store cracking up by the time I left because I was just on that mood. I'm not always on that mode, but I was on that mode. Um, I don't think they're good for your feet, are they? Listen, my toes don't go into the point. It's just, that's just voided space there. That's for show. Um, Okay, okay. All right, so let me get this done because I'm all up in here. I'm wearing the shoes. I bought a pair of cheap second backup shoes that are velvet, so I figured I'd walk in with the nice shoes, and then I'd switch shoes later. I will show you pictures. It will happen. Joelle, does it? Um, I have a wide toe box foot with an extra heel, narrow heel. Oh, those are so hard. That is my daughter. One of my daughters has her Mima's. T foot toes and her great grandmother's um thing trish long line bra for mom rolls yeah i got here <laughs> and i'm just laughing i'm like i'm like i mean i did say this was a kid's show but i was just a little bit like do they have something that sucks and holds you together that shows that you're not closed for business if you know what i mean i mean i might be a mom but you know my husband needs to know it ain't closed. Um, banana, sometimes I get a smaller size if I'm going to have a wide. Online, those shoes in your size. Right, that's what I'm going to find. I'm going to find them. I'm going to find them. They were just phenomenal. Phenomenal. I mean, I love them. I love them. I mean, I think that maker is like my new jam. Duct tape. Well, I want the duct tape. I don't want my husband like, I don't want my husband to like, you know, you take it off when you get home. I'm like, hey, honey. I mean, because we still hot and heavy after 16 years. And him be like, you must be closed for repairs or something with duct tape down there. You know, under there. Not down there. All right, let me. And look, I didn't even trim this. Cut that corner. I cut the one, but I didn't cut the corner. Oh, we got to move on to pockets. Because I have to do this twice. Woo! I'm somewhat. Oh, come on. Come on. Get this done. All right. Let me get this ironed out. So sorry. I'm on a day where I got to do it twice. You already saw that, so you're good. But I sw Oh, no, I didn't do it. I just had a moment. I thought I just sewed it inside out, but I didn't. Oh my goodness. But I just thought I did. I'd feel, I'd be like, okay, folks, we're going to finish this the, next week. But no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I was a little scared there at the moment, but I didn't.
All right, let's see. That's what I've been running into. My ADHD has been off the chain. So that's kind of what's been going on. I'm going to talk about it. Hollywood uses duct tape. Yeah, but Hollywood, Hollywood is all about what's appearances. Does that make sense? It's all about keeping appearances. It ain't about what's for real. Listen, appearances is half the show. The rest of the show with my husband is outside of that. Duct tape ain't going to work. He don't want no duct tape. Nah. You like this? I feel like I got a little Elvis Presley going. I didn't put enough, um, whatchamacallit. All right, so I'm turning that inside out to get a good point. Now that we're doing this right. All right, good point. So now what I want to do is I want to make sure that I iron this all flat like this. Okay, so I'm going to get this all. And I wish you could use a sexy corset. I got the best looking one I could, but I was at Bell's Outlet. I mean, the choices are just like not there. Not there. But I tried. But we live in a mostly elderly community. So me and grandmas were talking about, you know, let's not look like packaging. Trace your personality in order. Does, <laughs> don't have to worry. No, I keep it interesting. I sent him a picture of what I was going to wear. Well, the bag of what I was going to, the bag with the stuff inside. I didn't actually send him the um, goodies. Well, I did my hair. So she shaved this side. So it's still that short. And the goal is it's going to do this like really cool comb over, but it's not long enough. So it's going to kind of come over this way. It's going to be short here. It's going to be super cute. It's just not there yet, but we're, we're doing it. We're going to get it. it. It has a whole, you know, and then she went darker. And I got to tell you, I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, take your time. My daughter has just told me that she is done with school until after the new year. Yes, the I have a mask, but I do not. <laughs> All right, so let me get this iron out kind of deal. And I'm just making sure I've got getting this bottom. So the tricky part on ironing this is getting um, the bottom nice and flat. All right, kind of, sort of. I didn't do that good of a job. It's not, but here's the thing. It's not going to even be that noticeable. Nobody's going to inspect it because after a few washes, you'll kind of lose some of that. All right, so let's see. Yeah, that's not too bad. All right, so... Make sure your points are done because the next thing we're going to run into is. So here's the apron. So see, I've got a good width here. I could have just done it this far back, but see, I have it kind of come back down because I like that idea that it's straight and then it has a little flare because I feel like it gives you kind of structure. And if you wear it a little higher, you know, it's that baker's look. Now, this corner isn't all the way out, blunt end, or hold them together. And we're going to push this corner out. What? Wait, what? Oh, you say it's Jackie Onassis look? I'll go for that. All right. All right. See, it's not much. It's just like a little push out. But there's no big bulk here because we cut it at an angle. Woo. All right. So iron this out again I'm going to iron my corners you want to get it all nice and pressed out you want to have it all nice and pressed out now I'm going to pin this and we're going to do a top stitch Claire made it all right, so we're doing a top stitch. So see right already, we don't have any, and you don't have to worry about hemming at all. I feel like I'm taking a long time to do this. It was the whole seam ripping part. Okay, so I'm going to put a top stitch along the edge around the whole three sides, not the top. 
with my top stitches I like to do them a little bit wider and I like to keep them closer all right so just the top stitch <laughs> And when you top stitch, you don't want to go off the end. You definitely want to lift up your um, foot and pivot over. And pivot again. I am wiping my hands on mine while cooking. Oh, yeah, you got an apron on. Okay, so this part of the apron is done. We are going to put a pocket in and so Claire's like comment is just appropriate. So here's the front of the apron. And now we need to make a pocket. So that's what I'm using this um, piece here for. So we're actually getting two um, waistbands and the pocket out of here. There is no scientific to the pocket. What I'm doing is now I cut this one at 18 inches. This is a true half yard, right? Yeah, 36 inches. I'm gonna fold it this way now. What? Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna fold it. I'm folding it this way. And I'm going to use my hand to measure the size pocket I want. So in this case, I wanna make sure in projects, I really wanna have a big pocket. You made this look so easy. It is really easy to do. It really is, I promise. Okay, so my using my hand i'll show you so i'm going to cut this part off and using my hand uh, about a six inch pocket so with it being six inches i'm going to add another half inch so i'm going to cut oh you hear my baby coughing i am going to cut my salvage off Cut my salvage off. I'm going to cut my six inches. So six and a half inches because I wanted it. Maybe I'll go. No, I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'm gonna go six inches. But my hand fits in there. All right. You do what works for you. You might have a tinier hand. You might have a bigger hand. Do what works for your hand. Okay, so that's the first thing I'm going to cut. So for the pocket, but while we're here cutting, I'm going to cut my um, spit it out, Trish. I'm going to cut my waistband. So I'm bringing out my fabric back to here, and I'm going to actually cut it this way because we need two bands here. It's not long enough to get the other one. All right, so. Let me see if I can get this. Let me iron it. I'm going to iron it for a minute. So I can get it nice and flat. All right, so there. It's not completely even on the one side, but it's nice and flat. So this piece is, is it 15 inches? I thought it was 18. No, it's 15 inches, I guess. So I'm going to cut this at about seven and a half. Okay, measure it out. Yeah, this is coming up to 15 and a half. So I'm going to cut it at seven and a quarter. And actually, I could do it this way too. Sometimes, like, see, my brain's not functioning. 
So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut it in half. And I'm going to snip it here so I know that my measurement's straight. You see that? I just snipped it there. So that's kind of what happens sometimes with my ADHD is that I'll get going and I'll have so much going on that in here lately with the stress I've been under, I've been dropping my short-term memory really rough. And this is just like one, this is my foolproof way of dropping my short-term memory is I just, instead of measuring it, I just put a snip there. Just like all the tricks and stuff to do for coping. Okay. So I'm going to set this to the side because we're not making the waistband yet. But just remember, that's what I did. I just took my parts and I cut them. All right, I got to go turn the AC on. Y'all just hold on real quick. All right. Woo, it's getting hot in here. All right, all right. Um, I prefer full length aprons. Yeah, I do too. Just for this part, though, I wanted to keep it easy, but we can do full length aprons. It's not that much harder. Um, you should do a tutorial on the mixer cover you made. I love it. Oh, I made one of those two before. I I will think for, thanks for suggesting. I have ladies ask me about it. AC on, wow, it's 19 degrees. It's probably like 70 degrees on it. 70 degrees in here. And I've got the hot sweat shirt. So, waistbands. So, let's, before we do that, we're going to make a pocket. All right. It's, this fabric doesn't have a direction, so I don't have to be mindful of the direction. I'm just going to fold it in half like this and iron it. Okay, so I ironed it. I am going to sew, and I'm going to either leave an, I'm probably going to leave an opening right here, but I'm just going to sew around, around it on the three sides. I'm going to pin it so it doesn't get moving around. And it's going to look so sharp. I mean, by the time this is done, it's going to be so sharp. Haha, ha, it's hot in Florida. It is hot. That's that's the thing. Because we had somebody from Idaho come here, and they're like, I wasn't expecting this. Because everybody laughs like, Florida isn't cold. But your body can't acclimate because it could be 32 degrees at night, and then it's 70 in the day. And, it, I mean, it literally can jump 20 degrees in the course of half an hour. It's just insane. And so you can't really, um, you don't dress for it. Like you need a heavy jacket, snow jacket for like 15, 20 minutes. You just stay inside. You don't even bother going out. All right. Remember what I do so I don't forget because, you know, ADHD and me will forget. I put two pens really close to each other, usually about like this close. And that always reminds me to stop in there and not to sew between the two pins because I will not thinking about what I'm doing. So this case I can go so right off the edge. I don't have to pivot. I can just sew off the edge. So all right. So not a top stitch. All right. Yeah, I'm wondering what my kids are doing. They're probably crafting today. Craft day with me. Do -do -do. Okay. Blair says, I'm so glad you're doing this tutorial. Well, thank you. Yeah, we can come up, like, maybe after Christmas, we'll do one to show how to do a double bib. We'll do a one-piece bib, and we'll do a double bib. Or, not a double bib, a uh, bib. We'll do it as one, I don't know, we'll figure it out. Um, show you how to do those tops. It's not, it's not bad at all. Um, we should plan a sew with me project. We could all get together while we watch you. 
That would mean I'd have to be really, really prepared. What you want to make, and you give me a month to be think it out, and I will. Okay, so here it is. This is the fold side, and then I stitch these pockets. In the middle here, I have a opening. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fold my piece, and I'm going to see that I'm going to fold my piece. And I'm going to cut my corner, but not cut my threads, just my corner. So then I have this little notch. I don't know why I didn't think of ironing the fold to mark the center. Thanks for the tip. Yeah, or you could use a safety pin. Oh, wait, that's not a corner. Or you can use a safety pin. Um, oh, I thought you were doing a double pocket. My bad. No, I'm not doing a double pocket today. I'm kind of lazy-ish. I cut my corner. I just said not to cut the piece, and I did. I thought, oh, people were looking at me while in the store, headphones on, chatting. <laughs> All right, and I'm cutting the corners up at the fold so I don't have a bulk there. All right, I'm not going to iron this one. I'm just going to force it out. But now what I want to do is I want to take that opening and pull it inside out, and then we're going to iron it flat. It is, I will tell you, um, and me and my daughter have been talking about it, Doing these sews on Thursdays and you guys showing up, I'm getting so much sewing done. Um, because I usually don't make time to get it done, so I've been getting it done. All right, so I just turned it inside out. And it's just going to look like a square. I'm going to use my finger and my scissors when I'm done using my finger to get the points out. You know, see, the points. Don't iron it yet. Don't don't iron it. Yeah, I feel like I'm kind of running a little fever. But I don't know if it's just from the lack of air or what. Okay. It's my box so far. I gotta push this one out still. I'm gonna use my scissors through the hole. Um, we're gonna do a double. Um, top face stitch on this. We're going to sew it and then we're going to come back and sew it. And we're going to do that because it's going to give it extra strength than just one stitch. Because the last thing you want to do is put the effort in this. And after a few times doing, using the, the apron, you stick your hand through or you stick something through and you didn't want to make it. Or, you know, and then you got to fix it. Um, Claire says we should make something simple like mats and napkins. Um, I'm getting some good ideas for next year's Hanukkah and Christmas, right? Okay, so I'm going to iron this out. Now remember, this is where my hole is. When I'm done ironing it, it's going to look like there's it was sewn. It won't even show up. I'm not going to show you my handy dandy ironing. So this is my folded top. This is going to be the top of my pocket. I'm going to right now do a little top stitch across the top. I'm going to back stitch it and I'm not going to go off the edge. I'm just going to stitch it so that I don't have to worry about my, I'm losing my fold in my thing. Trish, do you have a cutting board linked anywhere? I'll have it linked afterwards. I'll come in after the show note and link the different stuff I use. Um, I like getting the kit. Like I have a, they have like, I'll link afterward fabric cutting that has the bar, the blade, and the mat. I think it runs around 35, 50 bucks in there. You can get an even bigger one though too. All right, so let me stitch this. Let me get my needle to come up. Okay, so I don't really want to go off the end. I want it to look nice and neat. But I did back stitch it. Okay, so if you like doing the decorative stitches and the zigzags, this would have been a great spot to put it. You can't really see it too much. It's just that finishing touch. All right, so here comes the money. So here's our apron. And we could put this on last. I'm going to put it on now, though, anyways. Here's my apron. Here's how I'm going to wear it. But here's my thing. Where do I want my pocket? If you're left-handed, you're going to want to put your pocket here. If you're right-handed, you might want to put your pocket here. And this is where it sizes up. You know, you're know, you going to have a waistband a little bit higher. This is where we're going to size up where we want our pocket. So I want my pocket about here. So I'm going to set my pocket. And see, and you're going to love the contrast of this. So then there's my pocket. So I want it here. 
don't pin yourself ladies don't pin yourself but I'm gonna pin it there so it holds so that's where I want my my pocket placing and now I'm gonna make sure that it's straight because the last thing you want to do is have a crooked pocket so it looks almost straight okay I'm gonna put a couple pins in here main to do is we're gonna come in here and we're going to stitch the edge and see here's my hole here but when we stitch it it's going to close it up and we get done and then we're going to come back and right next to it right along the side of it we're going to do another one if that makes sense so it'll have two tiny stitches together remember back stitch up here okay so i'm going to do and you can back stitch off the top but pivot at the bottom corners and by doing that, it'll help keep your pocket tacked together and it's not going to pull apart. Oh, that is so cool that you do both. Okay. Sure, you don't catch that. You know, you might want to roll your apron up a little bit so that it doesn't get caught up underneath because then that's more seen, more ripping it up. Okay, and now I'm going to pivot. And everybody's going to be like, you made that? What? That's awesome. Okay. I really should be teaching classes at my mom's shop, but I don't have time for that. Make sure you keep your fabric a little taut because you don't want it to buckle underneath either. That's why you really want to get it pinned. And I won't lie, if you like that whole stitch over thing, it's totally a thing. You can get away with it. It's stylish. I just cannot to. So see, I stitched. And you'll see. So see, this is what it looks like with the one stitch. You can't really see it, but it's there. And now I'm going to come in there and stitch right next to it. So I'm going to switch my needles paths and put it to the other side. There I go. I'm going to do the next stitch. Next stitch. Put it there. And I'm going to tell you, my stitches aren't even this straight. I want to find a flamingo fabric and make an apron. You should. There's flamingo fabric. You might have to hit a quilt store, though, to find it. Okay, it's not perfect, but nobody's ever going to know, but it looks so good. And let me see if I can show you. The double, the double lines. Come on. See it? So there's a double stitch. So it looks really good on this side. And look, on this side, it's, it's a little bit off. See here? It's, it's not even, but it doesn't matter because you can't. You can't even tell. You you just can't tell. Okay, so now it's time to make the waistband because we got to make the waistband on the top. But doesn't it already look so precious? Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Okay, so now we got to make the waistband. We already cut the two pieces. And the reason we did that because any one piece would not be long enough. So we really need the two pieces. And then that will give us enough to make nice bows. So I'm going to take my two pieces here, and the first thing I'm going to do is stitch them together. Okay, we're going to stitch them together. Double stitch, ladies. Double stitch. I told you. I mean, so it's it's going to be a full two hours to get through this one, thanks to my seam ripping. But it's okay. I 
I did not sew that straight. It doesn't even make. I do too. I like a big waistband too, and I like it if I can tie the bow on the side on the you know, and I can change it up. So I stitched it together, and now what I need to do is open up the seam and iron it, and get this to keep an open iron. This is now becoming our center mark. So if you wanted to do like a little something different, you could always put like a different like stitch of fabric in here, and then you know, so it kind of breaks it up, but. I'm gonna iron this real quick. I'm not taking it with me. Okay, now that we did this, I'm going to fold this whole piece in half. Okay, I'm folding. I'm folding this whole piece in half like this, and I'm gonna iron that in half. I should let you watch. Set you up. Can you see it? Yeah. All right. So I'm just folding it in half. And I'm in a little bit of dilemma. We could do a straight edge or we could even cut it to a, um, a seam. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. So I'm going to, I'm folding this over. Can you see? Hopefully you can see. And so then this gives me, this is now the top of our, this fold is the top of the apron. Okay, now that I've done that, now we're going to open it up. I'm going to fix this a little bit more. Now I'm going to open it up. Can you see? No, you can't see. I got the iron in the way. Open it up. And now I'm going to fold in. And I want to keep a consistency, so I'm doing about a finger length apart. You can fold it to the middle if you wanted to. I'm kind of folding it to the middle, to the, a quarter. See that? I just fold it like that. So I'm going to finger press it just so it holds together. Right. I'm going to come over. So I ironed it kind of to the middle here. So did you see what I did? Let me do that again. So I fold it in half. See, there's my half mark. And then see where my finger is? I fold it right to there. That's how I do it without, you know, without a gauge. That's my tips and tricks. That's my tips and tricks. And you want them really to stay the same. Another way you could do it too is, see, it has to come back to here. And like, I'll go ahead and repress it, but you could, you know, match it up this way and iron it also but I just like to go fold in half pinch fold over all right so it's almost like making double stitched bias tape right so come over here so I got my fold going then I'm going to come here, pinch there. Woo, 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 woo. All right. <laughs> so that, that one's done. Then I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to fold in half, pinch. Because see, when I do that, it puts a little tiny crease. And my fabric, right? And then that way I can find that little fold mark and I know how far to do it. Okay, so it doesn't quite look right. This part looks like it went too far. Just kind of fix that a little bit. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it back over so everything matches. So then I know. I did good. All right. And I want this to do it because when we do that top stitch, we want to catch both sides when we do it. All right. Now, I don't know about you, but I do really want that point. I want that point at the end. I don't want it to be a box. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do that really quick. Okay. So I did this. Now watch. 
You ready? So here's my folded side. You see that? Here's my folded side. Like this. And now I'm going to cut a corner off of it. I'm legit going to cut. I'm going to do it here on the... Um, I'm going to do it right here. Okay, here we go. I know I haven't seen anything y'all said. Sorry, I can't need an iron. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to corner because that's what I like. You know, as much of a corner as you want. And this is my fold side. This is my open side. See? There it is. I just cut a corner off. All right, so what did I miss? Need to get going. See you, Claire. Come back and watch. Um, out of the storm walking, I can send you some cool powered wheelchair in the snow. Oh, how cool is that? Okay. So now that this is done like this, what I'm going to do is take this one piece, see the corner? I'm like words. Just like this. See that? I'm going to flip it backwards. And now I'm going to stitch it shut. And that, my dears, is how you do a pointed corner. So that's the first one. And see, the first thing I'm going to do is just come across and cut that corner. Did you see that? Because I needed to do that. So now I'm going to come here and do the other one. See, I'm just piecing it together. And I did a double stitch at the end. Okay. Guess what I need to do? I've got to iron this. Got to iron it out. So, but I got to flip it out. So then I'm going to flip it. And you'll see. See, there's my corner. You know, because I like it like that. Do y'all like a corner on yours? Let's get this going. Do you know, do you think I should change like my, I wonder, I'm like, should I be comedy? On YouTube or just instruction okay so there's my point press that all right I need to do this one too gotta do this one too all right so this was important we had to do this because now we do this now and not later because we're about to get it all set up all right so there is that piece I'm gonna iron I'm gonna re-iron here But now's the time, now's the time to try it out. You know, make sure you have enough that you want on here. So, you know, so for me, it's going to come around, you know, and I'm going to have a nice end. If you wanted it so that you tied it to the side, then you need to think about that and you want to center it here to do that. Because wherever your center is, hard. So remember, we have this opening. So I'm going to put it in upside down. I'll put it in right side up. It won't matter. I really want, if you have one side higher than the other, make your higher side on the front. Okay. So now I know where my middle is. I got to refine my middle here. I'm going to put a pin. Yeah, they would make awesome gifts. I mean, and they'd be, and listen, we are like two stitches away from being done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift. See that? I'm going to lift this up. And I'm going to sandwich it in there like peanut butter jelly. And then I'm going to put it here. I'm going to put my pin in. All right, so then you just do that down the edge. Now, if you didn't want a flat front and you wanted something, you know, a little bit different, you could gather all of this up. You know, let me see. Let me see. Get this all nice and flat. And the nice part is because we did kind of a, um, we switched it around. Like nobody's going to see a raw edge. There's no raw edges, which really just kind of shows up like you're like this master crafter, you know. 
And we're using about a yard and a half, not even a yard and a half of fabric to make all of this. You know, so even your most expensive fabrics at a yard and a half, say a $10 fabric, it's still only going to cost you $15 to make. So, you know, look. Look, look, look. It's been, don't pain yourself when you try it, but look at that. See how nice, like, the pocket and the waistband go together? All right, so now what we need to do is we've got to stitch this. Trish, do you purchase most of your material? Unless I can steal it from my mother. I'm not sponsored by any means. So I buy fabric. Oh, where do I purchase? Joanne's on Black Friday. Unless your son gets into your fabric and cuts it all up. But yeah, I go Joanne's. Um, and Walmart. I heard, This is a Walmart fabric and a Joanne's fabric. All in one. All right, I'm putting some stitches here. We're actually going to come in and we're going to start the stitch about here, but we're going to come all the way around and we're going to come up and stitch the top because you know me, I like to keep that nice, that, you know, that it comes together kind of deal. I think that I'm going to give this one to my bestie. I think my bestie's going to totally get this one. She has to tolerate a lot, you know, selfies of me in a spinning room going. So, I mean, she's awfully special. Okay, double check that this is centered because, look, coming here, I'm matching these points up. And, oh, good, it is. See, it's centered. It's right there. So that is, like, phenomenal. I need another pin here. Oh, because I missed the pinning. I missed the pin. It didn't go all the way through. So, you know, double check that your stuff is. Yeah, that's good. Oh, I'm poking myself in the stomach. What am Oh, because I didn't move those center pins down here okay so I can take the one out of my pocket because my pockets done ladies we're almost done can you believe it and this thing is superb what would you put in the pocket I don't know my recipe my phone probably my phone that's what I put in my pocket I put my phone in there because you know I don't know about you but I'm a little bit like phone oriented more than I should be. All right. This is going to be a little bit tricky. I'm going to add a couple extra um, pins in there. Kind of deal. Just just to make sure it doesn't move. I don't want it to move. And now the nice part is um, there's this much inseam. So I know I'm catching it. And if it was any smaller than that, you might miss it. And then it's going to like pull up and it'll look horrible because that's what I've done in the past. Alrighty, so I am stitching this. I'll show you. You see it? Let's see if it'll zoom in. There we go. I am stitching this right here on the edge of it, and I have my needle all the way as far over this way as it goes. So I'm really catching all of this stuff. You see? I got all those layers, so I'm catching it there. And I'd like to like be able to put you right there, but I got nothing to hold it with. Okay. We'll do it that way. Can you see it? Okay. So I'm starting right. I'm going to start. If I can lift this. I'm starting like a little bit before I get to my fabric. All right, here we go. It's going to be loud. Plug your ears. My autistic daughter is on a hot dog kick for two weeks from now for every day for lunch. Oh, girl, I am a hot dog fanatic. I think I ate nothing but hot dogs through one of my kids' pregnancies. The red stitch is looking so pretty. Right? And I like I like having my red stitch like that. That's why I'm careful about my fabric. Getting y'all the close-up. The closer. See, look, I got a little gathering here. I'm just going to move my pen. See that? I'm just going to move my pen. I'm going to stretch my fabric out a little bit. I'm just stretching my fabric out. It's all good. What I run into is I might have to put a second stitch in. In case I don't catch the back. 
and then we'll just run a second stitch along the whole thing and nobody will know that that happened. I might give it to my girlfriend, but make her understand it's going in the fair. I need to put this one in the fair. See it? Alrighty. See, I did all these extra stitches. Yeah, I'm putting this one in the fair. This is my fair entry. And so now we're at the edge. So that these are nice and together. Kind of come back in here and just adjust it. All right, so I'm over here at this corner where the pivot is. Come on, focus. So now I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to lift my part and I'm going to turn it. So can you see? Let's give you a different angle. I don't know if you're going to see that well. Okay. I still got a nub here. I'm not going to go all the way to the nub. Go on that far and then I'm going to pivot. Now this is where everything gets a little crazy. Let's see if I can reach it up. No, you don't want it up like this. Now I got to bring it all back through here because of the way it is, so that I can bring it back in here. Okay, so you'll see. All right, let's see. Now I have to move you again. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Bam. All right, I mean, you get the gist, right? So then. Kind of got to wrap this up, see, it's, so I don't get it in the way. I don't want it in the way. Again, I gotta bring it back through because now I'm doing my tip kind of deal. All right, and then I gotta pivot it. Oof, falling off. This is like it. We're seriously, we're down to the end. Okay. And there's nothing, this is not perfect. This is far from perfect. But it, it still looks good. It's going to be great. Oh, man, until I went off the side, I was not watching my. All right, I did make a whoops here. Look, I didn't, I didn't get it matched up. Can you see it? Can you see my focus? Look, I got to show you. I did not match it up. Look. Came in off. So I got to inspect it. Focus, I got to inspect it. Oh, yeah, that's good. So the part about it, so see when it lifts up, I don't have any of the other parts. What happened? I froze. I'm freezing up. Okay. So it's done. This is it. This is the stitch. This is the stitch. Here is the apron. You ready? Listen. Put it where it needs to be. And really, I could have gone longer because, I mean, and you could have. You can make the straps as long as you want them. So, see? 
And then I got a spot for my phone. Look, I put my phone in there. And I like how big the pocket is. See, look at that. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Isn't that cool? There's my apron, y'all. I like it where I can I can center it up. And then I'm notorious. I'll actually bring it up this high. Kind of see and I usually like them a little bit more so I can tie in the front. Um oh good, you still see. So usually I go a little bit more so I can tie in the front, but see I took that piece out there. You know, and this is where you might want to put a different band in or something like that. You know, I guess it's from being pregnant and wearing aprons. You know, I'm used to the big belly. But anyways. There is your apron, y'all, but look how good that looks. And I mean, there's no finished, I mean, there's no unfinished edges. Everything is nice and clean. There's a clean look to it. You don't have that feeling that, um, you know, like some, like, you know, that somebody's going to see it and stitch something straight. And then because this is so busy, nobody's going to notice where my stitch lines are, you know, or here. One of the things we could have done too is I could have ran a stitch here for decorative. You know, but it's not a necessity. That's just a finishing touch. Um, see what I mean? Like, you're going to be dazzled. You're going to be just so dazzled. There's my apron. And it's totally festive. So, I mean, you can put one of these together for, um, it really makes a cute skirt, doesn't it? Like, I can totally wear this with some tights. Like, I got it. Um, you could use this as a great like gift, you know, or if you go to somebody's house. Um, I'm glad I want you to make one. I want you to make one. When you make any of the projects that we made today or at any time I do a so long stitch, um, tag me on Instagram and let me see the work you, that you do. You know, just do the app symbol just so Trish and it'll notify me because I want to see what you're making and, you know, that I'm inspiring you to be crafty, to be absolutely crafty. And enjoyable so next week we'll do um, the little bowls for the microwave like the the dish dish holder so I got to get off here took a full hour and 45 minutes to make that wouldn't have been so bad if I didn't have to use my seam ripper but we got it done um, thanks for hanging out to the end on this one but yeah I'm I'm, I'm totally digging it I thought I was gonna give it to my bestie but I don't think so. It'll look even cuter when I get a little smaller. Like I'm a little hulchy. But whatever, whatever. It's good. It's all good. I do. Do you not love the pocket though? Even if you don't use the pocket, I mean, it's still. I can see myself just sitting there like, yeah. Awesome. All right. I'm going to go. I'm going to see you later. Um, Come back. Give me thumbs up. Leave me comments. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Wait, where's my mouse?